11.30, special edition of the Sports Huddle. Bob Black back with you. We're broadcasting live today from the River City Sportsplex at the Mars Turf Wars Kickball Tournament. Some 40 teams are out here, men, women, co-ed. It is a great scene here at River City Sports Club. A lot of great kickball action is going. And the guy who's overseeing it all and running it all is sitting down and taking a breath for probably the first time since he woke up this morning. Arion Herbert is our tournament director uh, from Mars. Arion, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Uh, fill our audience in a little bit. I've been saying Mars, Mars, Mars. What is Mars and what do you do for it? So Mars stands for main attraction of regular season sports. Uh, it's a sports organization that I like when I started about five years ago in 2016. We started off doing it mostly in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, where we just were inviting, you know, recreation, doing it for recreational activity. And, and, you know, once we saw that there was a, a, a bigger audience and we realized, we figured that we can, you know, probably grow this product by offering this at a more competitive level um, in various cities that we know is where there's a large portion of the community. So that's kind of how it all got started. And, um, you know, we decided to get kind of creative with the brand and then we titled it as Turf Wars. And, you know, traditionally we see games, kickball games played on the front dirt soccer fields, the the softball fields, but with us playing on these artificial turf facilities and, and these soccer how different is the game playing it on turf? I watched about 10 minutes of it, and it looked a lot different than, as you said, the old traditional play it on a dirt softball. So, so uh, the, the number one thing is it's not as dirty, right? So <laughs> you don't get dirty when you're, you're out there playing, but um, the dimensions are all the same, so the game is pretty much identical. It's just that, you know, it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit safer, and the game is a little bit faster. Tell us a little more about the game at this level, particularly at the competitive level. I think we all remember playing it, whatever, at recess when you were in grade school, but this is a pretty high competitive level. It's, it's a very high competitive level, and it's, it's much different from what we're used to as kids. What we're used to as kids is, you know, they roll the ball to you, and you kick it as hard as you can, and you just take off and run, but um, at a competitive level, the game is played completely different. The pitch, um, they come in all crazy styles. You know, they side on it, you know, throw it full speed down the, down the, um, the, to the strike zone, uh, which makes it a lot harder for players to really kind of, you know, get a good foot on it and, and, and kick it like we used to when we were kids. And then on top of that, with the velocity and the, and the curve, you know, the ball kind of curves in at the last minute of the play, so it's really all about the timing. And then on the kicking side, um, it's a lot different from just kicking out when you were a kid. You know, we're a lot older, our bones don't operate and function the same way it used to when we were kids. So you see a lot of players running the ball in, in, in competitive kickball to really give themselves a good chance to make well, I noticed that, and Mitchell went over and watched for a little bit as well. The catching position seems to be the most active, maybe other than the pitcher, on the field because of what you were just talking about, and that is defending against the ball. Exactly, yep. So you have what they call the triangle, and that consists of the catcher, the pitcher, and then in baseball or softball, you charge on your shortstop, which we call the charge. Um, and those are the three main positions that we really see um, the most active because of, to your point, you're really trying to, you know, uh, plot against so yeah, the catch is definitely going to run out. So you need someone there that's the speed and fast like yourself. <laughs> maybe about 40 years, no, not even about 40 years ago. I don't think that, maybe in my dream that happened. Uh, it is a pretty quick moving game too, isn't it? You get a lot of games in too, right? So you get a lot of games in. Uh, at these tournaments, we play four three play games, and pretty much what that is, it's kind of just like a preliminary competition to kind of weed out who the, the more dominant teams versus some of the uh, inferior teams. And then what we do is with, today for co we have 20, tomorrow is where we have the remaining teams playing. Um, but we take the top 16 teams and we bring them into single game elimination and then we allow them to compete, uh, to compete from there. So from wherever they're coming from, they're playing a decent number of games. Nobody's yeah. coming here yeah. just to play one yeah, or two yeah, games, yeah, right? At minimum, at very, you know, the worst, you and I, we can assemble a team right now and play a minimum for one. Yeah, very good, absolutely. What are they playing for? So they're playing for a cash prize. Uh, we, we have two divisions playing today. Actually, I, I, I was wrong. We have 24 total teams. We have a social division. It's playing for a prize, just a trophy and you know some goodies. But uh, the co-ed teams out here competing for three, uh, $3,500 today. Wow, <laughs> that makes it worthwhile. All right, we will finish up with you, but where else do you host these tournaments? Not just here in Richmond, right? Just in Richmond. So we host these tournaments uh, in various cities. This is our first year actually in various cities. So uh, we're going to be in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, on June 5th and June 6th, the Franklin Gateway uh, Sports Club. Uh, then in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Ortho Carolina Sports Club facility. Uh, that's going to be July 31st and August 1st, followed by a follow up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, September 25th and 26th, and that, that one right there is probably one slated to be our biggest one. Wow. 
That's awesome. How was it getting through the pandemic and COVID and how much did that impact you? How much better do you feel about where we are now? I, I feel a lot better as far as where we are now. You know, the pandemic really, um, you know, it impacted us. Uh, for sure, you know, we, we planned to do four tournaments last year, uh, just like we're doing this year. And because of the pandemic, we were reduced to only one. Um, you know, but it, I, I think it helped in the long run because it allowed us to really think through um, a lot of safety protocols that we were implementing and just really trying to provide a safer environment, cleaner environment. Uh, so, um, you know, and then in, in, in sitting, we learned a lot of them. We learned a lot about some of the things that we were about to do. We were like, we're glad we didn't because, you know, it may not have worked out. All right, is this a uh, shockwave team, the team to beat, the Samir team that we talked to them? Yeah, right now, you know, they're, 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 they're currently the number one seed right now. Harry, I'm gonna let you get back at it. I know you got a lot going on. Thank you, my man, for coming out and coming out to the tent. All right, Ariane Herbert, tournament director from Mars and the kickball, the Turf Wars kickball tournament here at Richmond. One of the several stops that they're making, as I mentioned, Atlanta, Charlotte, Gatlinburg, and right here. Thank you, Ariane Herbert, tournament director from Mars. We'll take a break. We'll come back. J.C. Palmer.